like just happened to be spring this week. If you saw our social posts, we're so excited to announce the official welcoming of the spring season. Um, so officially done with snowmen and winter and moving on into the fun summer months and the warmer days ahead for spring. Um, and I thought, what better project than to do something with flowers? And this collection I'm about to stitch today is actually a recent release in the past couple weeks or so. Um, and we had to circle around till I could actually find a day to stitch it. But our floral cork coasters is the project that I'll be doing today for the live. This is really fun. If you saw any of our teasers leading up to today, we said if you've never tried stitching with cork fabric before, today is the day to learn all about it. Um, and also make a really fun and practical project that is finished when we're done. You'll notice that it is freestanding. This is the design that I'll be stitching today, so I'm going to replicate the finished one that you see here. But I wanted to show off some of the other pretty flowers. I'll grab the phone camera in a second and show you a close-up. But all these different florals come in this set. I believe there's one, two, three, four, five, I think six different flowers or so, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, but very cute, practical project. The wonderful thing about cork is it is um, protects your tables and surfaces. I'm going to say absorbent, but that would be the wrong definition technically because it doesn't soak up the water. It provides a barrier from any wood tables or surfaces. Um, it definitely helps glasses from slipping on slick surfaces. And they're just really cute and fun to do. And they are freestanding, so they have those finished backs. So while I wait another minute or two, do we have some people tuning in behind uh, the scenes? We have Deborah B. And Hi, Deborah. Christine from Florida. Hi, Christine. All in Florida. Florida is where my parents are, so I hope it's nice and sunny by you all. All and right. Of Martha. Hi, Martha. I love that you tune in every week. It makes my heart happy. And if you guys have seen Martha, she just had a birthday. Um, cheers to Martha. Um, not too long ago. So I have a bunch of projects to show off that use cork. Um, I have my materials here, so I think I'm going to go ahead and get started. That way we don't wait too long to do the project. Um, and reminder, if you are tuning in late, you can back the video up at any point and it will live on our YouTube channel. So you can go and rewatch the live and do the stitch out with me, or you can watch it, take notes, and then go do your project yourself, however you guys see fit. Um, so once again, I'm doing the Floral Cork Coasters. It's like a tongue twister every time I say this collection. Um, but I will be doing one of the flowers. The flower design I'm doing is number two out of the set, if you happen to want to stitch along with me today. Um, and this one I chose because if you'll notice, some of the flowers have single color cork, like these. And then there's a few that have additional fabrics in them. So this one actually has a double applique. Um, and I wanted to make sure to show you one with the trimming involved. So. I'm going to go ahead and go over what I have here for the project, and we'll dive right in and get started. And if you stay tuned, I have a surprise promo for you for tuning in. We love to reward everyone that tunes into our live, so you will get a surprise code in a little bit. And if you stay even longer than the code, I have a super exciting announcement that has to do with something coming out next week. So that's my teaser for you. If you stay tuned or watch it again later, you'll get to know the information. But for our project today, since we are doing those cork floral coasters or floral cork coasters, tomato, tomato, we needed some cork fabric. So I get asked all the time on lives as well as um, at project events. People used to say, well, where do you guys get your cork? What is it? How do you get it? How do you stitch with it? It is just like fabric, so very fun. You can use this in all kinds of projects. Um, obviously, you want to think about things that get laundered frequently. Um, so we're using them in something that doesn't get washed, which would be my recommendation. Um, but if they do get moisture on them, it's totally fine because the cork kind of acts like a barrier between whatever you lay on it. So I have some fun bright colors here. I got some like red cork and some orange. You'll notice that the material is slightly different between the two. That's fine. One's thinner, so my red fabric is actually a little bit thinner layer cork than this orange. They both will stitch in the project, so if you buy different kinds and you're worried about the thickness, you don't have to fret. I also wanted to show off some of the brands. So here, I'll grab the phone, show you those details, and then give you a pan over of the brand for the faux cork. So here's the color of the materials I'll be using. They're nice and bright on this camera, I love it. And then here is the sample I'll be making today. So very fun, you can see how it's freestanding. And then this is just one of the packs of the cork. So this one says, go to cut. Again, we looked this up on Amazon, <laughs> so you can find them in local craft stores. Um, let's see if I can get this open with one hand. There we go. And I can just kind of show you guys some of the colors in this set. So we have like blue cork, purple, 
bright orange again, some greens in there. So this, I just wanted to show you guys real quick that they do come in tons of colors. So we do have browns, but you also can have vibrant tones, which was great for things like these floral posters. The other pack I have here is another brand, again, ordered on Amazon, and this one was 12 pieces of cork already cut, um, and they're like sheets of paper, basically. So paper sized. Um, these, they don't have a shimmer in them, but it looks shimmery. So I don't want you guys to think that's glitter. It's just the light hitting it. Um, but these are more of the fabric kind, while the other material is a little bit thinner. Where's my thin one? There it is. And you can kind of see a cork pattern through it. So the thickness is slightly different, but it really won't affect the project. I just wanted to go ahead and show you guys some of that. And I will set those out of my way. So to begin the project, we will need some tearaway stabilizer. And because of the size of these, the five by seven hoop is perfect. So always try to pick a small enough hoop for your design. If it gets too big, you end up having things bounce in the hoop and you can mess up the design in some ways. So we always like to work with the smallest you can fit it in. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that into my machine. Let me make sure I don't have a random bobbin in there. Nope, we have white. I will end up needing a matching bobbin, which I have wound here, but I will let you guys know when we switch to that. And I need my first thread color. We're gonna be doing the outer petals of the design first. So I already loaded it up to my machine and I hit embroidery so that it's ready to go. And on screen, it tells me that the first step will be a placement stitch. Now, I have my steps printed out for me from the tutorial so that I can see what color is going down. We're gonna do that cork that's red first. And I set it down, so I gotta grab it. There it is. So we have the red and the orange. So I'm actually gonna take my red cork, set it right over by my workspace, and pick my thread color. So my first one, doing this nice red. It is just a placement stitch, but I know that the cork I'm laying is gonna be red, so I'm gonna go ahead and match it. And if you guys have questions about materials or what I'm doing process-wise, please let us know. We have someone monitoring the comment section so I can repeat the question and let you know an answer. So I have my thread put into the machine. Again, we're starting with that red and I'm gonna go ahead and run that first machine step. Now cork is really cool. I love how it is like a fabric. We can use it in all kinds of things as appliques, as project bases like we are for this project. And again, I did pull some samples. So once we get the embroidery going, I'll take some time to show you guys those as well. And we do have several petals for it to run. Super cute. I hope everyone's excited for the spring weather. I know we were just talking about behind the scenes how pollen is going crazy in North Carolina. If you're not from here, you might not have any clue just how bad it is, but I literally saw an internet joke the other day about washing your car and by the next morning, your car is coated in pollen. So if you're a pollen allergy friend of ours, then I'm sure behind the scenes can sympathize. <laughs> We're all sniffles and sneezes around here. But with pollen comes pretty spring flowers. So for that, we're grateful. Lucinda says she's never heard of cork fabric before. Thank you for doing that. Ah, Lucinda, I love that you haven't tried cork. This is an awesome beginner project. Um, another reason I love showing projects is there's something that you can finish and have a finished object when you're done. Um, and it's going to take as long as our live stitch out today. So less than an hour or so, I would say, for the whole project. If you're curious, my um, timer in the machine that tells you how long it will take says roughly 28 minutes. Obviously, we have to stop and do some trimming and embroidery, but it's usually not too long. So I love the fact that you can finish it in one afternoon. So I have my placement stitch ran. I'm going to take my red cork fabric and just lay it right over the whole thing and make sure I have those placement stitches covered. Now, if you wanted to pre-cut the fabric, you could, but I have enough cork here that I'm just gonna go ahead and lay it over top and then I'll trim away all the excess. And if you're new to embroidery, you can definitely use embroidery tape here to help secure the cork to the hoop. Um, I know where the needle travels and where the hoop's moving, so I'm not too worried about my fingers in the machine, but I always want to give that option. We are able to adjust the rules for people who are not as comfortable or new to their machine. Now, as it's 
doing its tack down, I'd love to remind people that haven't ran too many Anita files yet that all of our designs include a placement and a tack down step for all your appliques. Um, our written instructions also let you know if you have to place something after an embroidery step before the next machine step. So we always try to write the steps in the most user-friendly way, helping it make the project as simple as can be. Got two more petals here. I also did a fun array of colors. I know we're on the machine screen camera over here. So if you can see the fun array of colors I chose, I did this nice bright like raspberry pinky red, some coral orange. Obviously my flower has to have a center like that. So I did some nice melony yellow in here. And then of course we have some like stippling on the whole coaster, which is really cool because that's kind of a quilting technique that you get to see in an embroidery project. Laura asked, are you using a special needle for this? That is a great question. So Laura asked on our comment section if we are using a specialty type of needle or a particular needle. We are not. The great thing about Anita Designs is most of the time we're using a standard 7511 needle. That's what's in my machine. I've not changed it. And I'm real naughty because I didn't change the needle since the last project. And I know some of you are big about that too. <laughs> so we don't tend to break or change needles unless they break or have an issue. Um, but this is just a standard 7511 needle. I have my base fabric or the first set of petals, I should say, tacked down. So I'm going to go ahead and use a pair of scissors and do the trim. I highly recommend a pair of curved tip embroidery scissors um, or curved tip applique scissors. You might find it um, different names from different places. And I'm gonna go ahead and just trim tight on all the cork. Now, while I'm cutting, I'd love to give you guys a pro tip that if you do purchase this collection or if you have it at home already and you're waiting to embroider it now that you have the follow along video with me, um, the fun thing to note is that if you're doing one of the flowers that does not have a secondary applique in it, so things like this guy right here, it only has like a center that's done with embroidery and no extra applique, you can actually wait to trim the excess cork right until the um, very end, right before you run the satin stitch. Um, we do have a back fabric, so you'll have to trim on both sides of the hoop, which I'll get to show you guys. Um, but that's a great way to make sure things don't pull out of the stitches and that nothing moves around. Um, so we love to suggest if you can wait to trim towards uh, the end of a decorative satin stitch right before it runs, you can do that. I'm trimming my petals right now because I'm gonna have two sets. And I see we have a question. Yeah, Lucinda asks, I have a Brother XE2. Will this design work on my machine? That's a great question. A Brother XE2, I cannot say I know my machine models that well. I have an SE1900 SE Brother, uh, which has a 5x7 hoop max, and it can fit these. So as long as your embroidery machine does embroidery, um, if you have a Brother, I assume it's reading PES files, which we do include in all of our design packs. Um, and then you just fit it in the 5x7 hoop, it should embroider. Um, but don't quote me because I'd have to research the specs on your machine. Um, and I'm not positive. But it sounds like your brother machine should do it. I want to say almost all the home embroidery machines by brother can run our files. So great question. If you're not sure, contact your local dealer. <laughs> I love to refer you guys to the actual machine specialist. I like to think of myself as a design specialist. But great question. And on the topic of design files, we do include all the machine formats. So if you're watching right now and you have a Viking or a Foth, and you're like, Melissa, I don't have Brother or PES files, that's fine. Because all of our master zip files that um, you receive when you download our products will include multiple machine formats. So you guys can pick the one that works best with your machine, and it'll give you the best results. And some machines I've learned can actually run more than one file kind, and you might not even know it. I know that this um, baby lock machine is supposed to take PES, but it will read DST files as well. So commercial files can work on some machines. So it might just be a little bit of play, figure it out, um, which ones open up and load. Um, and always feel free to reach out to Martha with customer experience here at Anita if you have questions about file type or if they fit your machine. But it sounds like your brother machine should be able to do it. All right, so I've done my trim. You guys can kind of see here, there's those first sets of petals. And now I'm going to run the placement stitch for the inside. So it looks funny because there's absence space and tear away right now. But once we add this next placement stitch, so I'm just gonna run it in the same color, mark off the area I'll need. When we add the next layer of cork, that'll give us our top. And then reminder that we put a fabric on the back. So you're actually gonna get several layers there. 
I'm gonna do this nice bright orange as the inside. I liked this first sample, so I'm, I'm just mimicking it. I think it came out really pretty. All right. I've also gotten great feedback that you guys loved when I had a guest star on the Stitch Out, so I'm trying to plan some more in the coming weeks of some more either Josephine or Catherine coming back on because they both did a wonderful job. All right, I'm going to go ahead and do my tack down. Again, it's already programmed for me, so I just hit the go button, and it's going to do a two-time pass around the shape of the inner flower. To be honest, this might be one of my favorite projects to make because I just am going to take this flower home and call it my own at the end of the project. Every time we stitch live, I let people keep their stitch outs and we already have one flower, so I'm going to keep this one for my desk. That's the other fun thing. You can put these at your workspace or sewing space, add a little pop of spring to your sewing station. Um, or another great suggestion is taking several of them putting them in a little bundle and tying them together with some ribbon. And that's a great housewarming gift or if someone's throwing a party and you need a gift for the hostess, you could stitch one of these a day for about a week before your party and you got a nice little present to give them. I see my thread is starting to fray. So we're gonna go ahead and re-thread it. If you wanted to see what I mean, you can see that little mess right there on the end. I wanted to take that out, but it didn't have any issues stitching so far from what I can tell. All right, that was my tack down, so I'm gonna go ahead and do my trim. Oh yeah, I only did like a one ply pass, but it's fine. I know where the stitch is, so I'm gonna go ahead and trim. Again, using those curved tip scissors. The reason I suggest those, um, some people like the duck bill scissors. I can't stand them, but that's personal preference. Um, the curve is great because it helps you lift the fabric with that slightly lifted edge. And then the really sharp tip helps you snip into small spaces. So as I got to go into the little points of the flower petals, the little tip snip is the perfect way to get that without trying to crank your hand in there or get into strange angles. And the great thing is the shapes are not very difficult to cut because they're just nice big flower petal shapes. And since this is going to get decorative stitching around the edges, a reminder that you can trim all the way to the line. Making flowers is so fun. You guys get free singing as your entertainment today. <laughs> I got to amuse myself. If I'm by myself, it's not as fun when I have someone else to talk to. So it's fun, but I don't get to read your comments. Catherine's got to shout them out to me if there's any comments about what we're making. Because I can't read them right now. All right, so I trimmed that away. You can see I still have plenty of cork left. Reminder that we'll end up using it for the back. I can pick whichever color. I think I'm actually gonna do the red as the back once we get to it. So I'm gonna set that right here. And there's a little shot of the applique steps finished. So, so far I have those two. We're now gonna move into the stippling that's on the flower petals. So this is almost like on a quilt block, how it free motion stipples and just creates dimension. While this isn't being quilted because of the cork material, it does add a really pretty effect to the texture. I'll slide this in here and get it going, and then I'll show you a close-up again of the flower petals so you can see what I'm talking about. So I'm on step five, and I want to do the color 184. I'm using a mix of Floriani and one Madeira, so if you're curious. Any thread brand works though, and you can always convert our colors online using an online thread converter. There's tons of them out there, so I don't have an exact link to pref like preference for one, um, but we'll just look up conversion from Floriani if you ever need the other thread brands. So you can run things similar to how we did, even if you don't have the same exact colors. All right, so I have my 184 in there. It's going to be doing decorative stitching on the outer petals here. So I'm going to go ahead and start that, and then I'll show you up close some of that texture. So now you can kind of see there's like more than one color shade in there too, so that is why this project takes um, 30 minutes or so according to the machine, is it's doing multiple layers of stippling shading. So in here you can see some yellow, some brownish golds, the orange, and then of course from far away you can see how it adds like a highlight, low light to the petal areas there. So just some fun things with thread play. There's my little color palette for you. And I mentioned earlier, we did need a wound bobbin to match. So I did the color that's on the edge. Now, fun fact about this one, I'll show you the back side of it. 
It actually had the uh, satin stitches segmented for the tips of the petals that were another color. And when we ran this, we ended up matching the bobbin to the inner color. I'm actually going to do one full color on the bobbin in the back instead of this duo tone. So that way it has a cleaner finish. So proof that even us, we make changes and mistakes or things we want to fix. Um, but this one, I'm going to have it do the bright red all the way around the whole back side. Even though these petals are orange. So just a little insider info for you so you can see how we constructed ours, what it looked like, and what I'm making over here. So yeah, well, this is lots, of lots of possibilities. Lots of possibilities, yes. Orc is very fun. I think they're really cool to use. Um, another cool thing, like this is totally taking a tangent for you all, but I'm here to help you think of creative ways to use your designs outside of what we tell you. So if you like the flower shapes in these, you could literally merge them onto quilt blocks and do them with applique fabric instead of cork. So let's say you wanted to make a quilt and you had frame quilt blocks with nothing in them, you could pop this sunflower design in there in your machine through merging. And instead of using cork, you could just use cotton and skip the back step. So you don't have to put a fabric on the back, you just trim, skip the machine step, and then run your satin stitch, and you have a standard applique flower. So that's a creative way for me to suggest to you that you can use projects and other files from Anita in your own way without needing digitizing software. All you have to do is pay attention to your machine steps and figure out what you don't need and what you want. And the great thing is anytime you load a design from Anita Good Design, it drops center in the hoop. So if you pull up a block, and stitch out the block and then pull up another design. As long as you haven't moved it, it'll perfectly center itself in whatever you last had in the hoop. So those are some really cool above and beyond tips for you guys. If you're newer and still figuring it out, don't worry about it, but just some fun ways to take designs outside of their intention. I have another project question or question on what we're doing. Janita asked, uh, how about vinyl? Janita asked about vinyl. Yes, actually I was considering using vinyl today but the feature was on cork, and I had all these great cork projects I wanted to show off to you. But that is an awesome point. You can definitely swap the cork for vinyl. They make glitter vinyl, um, that marine layer vinyl, I think is what it's called, or polyurethane, like marine vinyl. Um, outdoor fabrics, if you're really worried about waterproofing something over a wood table. As long as your needle can safely stitch through it, you could definitely experiment with what fabrics you use. Um, the cork was great for the coaster method, but I think vinyl would be a really fun effect. I could imagine like a sparkly yellow sunflower. So definitely try that and send us pictures if you do. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and change my stipple color now. If I can pull my thread out, there we go. Step six is my 1221. So I'm switching to my Madeira color. And literally most of the rest of this is embroidery except for when we do the back stuff. So you can just hang out and watch it happen and I will walk you guys through all of it. It said, Melissa, you forgot to lower the little arm. We all make that mistake. <laughs> when I used to teach events, people would forget to flip the little lever down and they'd have to call me over and be like, how do I get it to start? And I'd just go, Boop, and then it would start and they'd crack up. And I said, I do it all the time. So there was the proof. I forget to stick the little arm on the hoop down. All right, so while we're waiting on that to embroider, this one's gonna take a couple minutes, just like two minutes or so. I wanted to show off some of the cork samples I pulled out, and we have a few to go over, but just really cool ways you can use cork um, and different project ideas with how we've done it. This first one is obviously stunning, so I put it on the table. Check out this whole bag. Now we were just talking about how cork is very durable. What is it? It's Interjection, we have a machine pop-up window here. Check and re-thread your upper. So just like with y'all, it happens to me too. I gotta sit here and fix my thread. And I can't pull it from the bottom because it's being cranky. So whenever that happens, I sometimes just like to pull a foot or so of thread out so that there's no more weak spots or kinks in it. And then we'll just try re-threading. Um, and you can back the step up if you find that it's necessary. This is mostly just stippling but I can also tell it left some blank space and put a bunch of holes where it was trying to go. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and rethread, and I'll back it up by a few stitches. So in my screen, I have like the plus minus or advanced step option screen. Um, and I can see the step that I'm in. I'm gonna back it up by like two sets of 10. So there's negative 10, I hit that twice. That puts me about 20 stitches back. And I'm gonna do it one more time, so 30 stitches. 
it definitely lost the thread a while ago because now I can see that it's right around where it last, last left off. And I'm still in that step. I just backed it up a little bit and we're gonna go ahead and resume, see if that takes care of the problem. No more problems. There we go. All right, <laughs> we'll let that keep going. Just keep an eye on it. If it stops, I'll have to interject again. But I wanted to show you guys this beautiful cork bag. We were just talking about how the cork is great for being durable. It is obviously not waterproof, but water resistant. Um, and so we tried that concept with a really cool fabric bag made out of this cork. It is fully lined with cotton too. This was from our 3D flower petals special edition. So obviously the feature design is our 3D flower petals. This one has a really cool lotus and you can see those 3D petals here. We just talked about 3D last week. So as a refresher, anything that has a 3D element, you have to stitch the 3D element first. So in this case, I would stitch all my petals and then you stitch out your main design. And in this case, we stitched it on large cut of cork fabric. Um, we embroider it out and then in the hooping for the second design, it'll have a marking stitch for where you lay those petals. So then you simply line them up to the little stitch and it'll tack them on for you. No additional hand sewing needed for that, which is really cool. Um, as much as I am good with embroidery, I am a weak sewer. <laughs> so we're still working on that. Um, but we did have a seamstress assemble this bag project and even gave the step-by-step -step instructions and all the measurements on how to do it. And that is included in that special edition release. I have a question, yes. Uh, two quick questions. Uh, Emily wants to know where we get the cork and Linda wants to know if cork can be washed. Ah, Linda wants to know if cork can be washed. I'm gonna go with no, but you can probably spot clean or wipe it down. I have never laundered anything with it, so from my knowledge, no. See, it's being cranky at me again. And then our other question, I totally forgot her name, but she asked where we get the cork fabric from. Um, I mentioned earlier we just kind of check it on Amazon. Um, local craft stores are also a great place to check. I'll give you guys some devastating news I just found out that Hobby Lobby, or no, Joann's Fabric, Joann's, is filing for bankruptcy, <laughs> which is terrible, and I shouldn't laugh at that, but... That means they need your support to go buy fabric. So go check them out if they have any cork fabric there and keep them in business. Better so deals. Yeah, and they probably have some good deals to get rid of like products that they have excess of. That is not an incentive or a promo sponsored, but I just thought I'd mention it because I read that in the news the other day and could not believe it. I was like, they're going bankrupt? They have 800 stores across the nation. So I know no matter where you are in the U.S., you can go find a Joann's. And try Andy to get says some fabric. There's a place called Connecting Threads. Connecting Threads. Good suggestion. So that's in the comment section on one of our platforms. But uh, Connecting Threads, she said you can find some cork fabric. Again, we just did an Amazon search. We try to buy it in rolls or pre cut sheets, depending on the project. If you're doing something small like this, you can get those like 8 by 12 ish, 12 -ish sized pages of cork. All right, we're really going to try this again because it keeps getting cranky on the stippling. I feel like this little machine is just trying to go so fast. And I don't want to change the speed. So we're just going to leave it. Madeira thread? Uh, currently, I have a Madeira spool on there. It could be that the thread is different. Yeah. Have, have you noticed that? I have problems with Madeira on that machine. See, Catherine's letting us know. If you stitch on a home machine, apparently the Madeira is just, you know what I think it is, the direction that the spool unwinds. Some insider info. So for Floriani, I think the thread comes towards me, but for Madeira, it's going away. And so I'm like, I wonder if that changes its tension. Um, all right, now we can change thread colors. It did happen to finish that step correctly. So I'm on step seven, which tells me 786. Again, I'm just following my list of colors here, so nothing too crazy to miss out on. But I know it has a decent amount of embroidery on it, so I'm just trying to keep it going while we hang out. And you guys get to watch it kind of unfold before our very eyes. Unfolds the wrong term, I guess. Embroider. <laughs> There's no folds. All right, so this one's doing a little bit of the darker stippling shading right towards the center. So that's what it's running right now. But back to this awesome cork bag, I just wanted to mention that that 3D technique was done, how it was done. So we kind of talked about that. I hear you, machine. You're getting cranky. It's, it must be the Madeira thread. <laughs> I don't know why. Let's see. Do we have a speed setting? I can turn it down a little. Oh, yeah, it's going at 1050. Let's do like 900. Just a little bit lower. Just try slowing it down a little. I think the thread is just angry with how it's unspooling from the pin that you set the spool on. People are asking why are you not using a thread stand? 
because I usually don't from Madeira, but I also don't often stitch on this whole machine. I'm out on the floor and we don't need the thread stand out there for those. So that's a great recommendation. If you have trouble with thread, try a thread stand. But also for the record, the spool that's currently in here is Floriani, so it shouldn't be having issues. <laughs> I think it's just having trouble catching it. And I just put a fresh bobbin in before we started, so you don't have to say bobbin, because I already checked that. It's going, all right. We're just gonna have to babysit it a little, and that's totally okay. That's why I'm here, keep an eye on it. Make sure it's running, so if you hear me stop, I'll let you know what I'm doing. But there's that 3D flower, the Lotus, from that bag. That was our 3D flower petal special edition. And again, the project construction on how we did it with the cork. We even made the straps ourselves. All that information comes with that tutorial. So a really cool way to take just a standard, um, like not even standard because it's 3D, and embroidery design and turn it into something really cool. Tell me this isn't so fun if you're going to the grocery store, need a little bag for some magazines or books to bring with you to the beach. Very cool. People love the bag. Yeah, I love the bag too. I'm glad to hear that. That was a good one. All right, so change out my thread. This color is going to be step, step three, 784. Had to make sure I was reading the right color. But yeah, see how when I pull the Floriani, I'm pulling it towards me and the thread comes this way. For the Madeira spool, when I lay them on the machine, it's coming the opposite way. So I just have a feeling it was a tension issue. Something you can look into yourself. That thread was stuck in there. All right. I'd say even with the hiccups, it's still going pretty great. It's the machine, not the design. I'll have you know we're very bad about servicing this machine too. So I'm sure you guys are better about it than we are. Um, so if it runs into issues, I usually blame the machine and not the design file because they stitch just fine out on our other machines. We probably just need to get this oiled and serviced soon, but we'll, we'll reapproach that topic later. <laughs> All right, so for some other cork examples, we did bring out this sample last week. I wanted to bring it out one more time just to talk about it. So last week, if you missed our live with Catherine from Graphics, um, she joined us to stitch out a project on live of these awesome moths on our Magical Moths quilt. And the thing I wanted to show you guys is I mentioned last week that they do feature cork in them. And so here they are on the actual quilt and you can see how their bodies are created with that cork fabric. Very cool. They do get tacked onto the quilt in any arrangement that you would like, but the 3D moths themselves with their wings, those are made in a hooping by themselves. So the finished moth can be done. If you missed our stitch out, definitely go back on YouTube on our channel and go to the live section and you can re-watch that video at any point and see exactly how we made one. Catherine actually changed the cork in her moth to be this really cool velvety material to make it fuzzy, kind of like a moth is. Um, so I just wanted to pull this one out with the cork to kind of feature how, hey, we've used it here on raw edge designs because cork doesn't fray. So very great if you want to try it in like homey looking handmade things like these little raw edge moths. So that would be one that I wanted to share with you guys there of the cork being used in a project again. Um, I know there's so many people that love Christmas, and you might be like, it's way too early for Christmas, Melissa, but there are also people out there who stitch their Christmas projects as soon as Christmas ends through the year until the following Christmas. So I know it's never too early for the select audience out there. We do have some really cute Christmas confetti coasters. Um, these are an Anita's Express project, which we don't do the line anymore, but basically Anita's Express was a product line where we did about 100 different collections where they finish in 45 to 90 minutes. Um, so it makes a great finished project that you can gift, keep for yourself, stash or store it in your sewing room. Um, but these are really cool. I'll show you these up close as well. They feature our confetti technique. And confetti, which will feature another week for Technique Tuesday, but confetti is basically taking little bits of scrap fabric, or in this case, ribbon and glitter, um, vinyl, and they cut it up and they sprinkle it over the design. And then there's this tool or netting that lays over top. But the cool thing is they were made with cork. So I wanted to show that off. They have a nice substantial shape to them. They don't flop because of their um, stiffness with that cork fabric. So if you like Christmas, there are more than just these two, but these are the two samples I had on hand. And that would be confetti Christmas coasters. So a little different shape. Instead of a circle or a flower, you get a square. So pretty cool for that. So we're gonna go ahead and swap colors again. I'm making my way through this flower. It's looking cute. Okay, so in step nine, ooh, we get to go back to the nice bright pink. It's 156. I'm biased. I love 156 and 155. If you know Floriani, you'll know what I'm talking about. 
And if not, I'm a crazy person and I know all the thread colors because I work here. So if you're like, how does she know these random numbers? It's because I write them every day. <laughs> so I like the specific shade. All right, we're going to go ahead and run the stippling. This one is going to be on the outer set of petals, just so you know where it's running. It's doing the bright corally shading in those tips. So very cool. All right. Another really cool cork project that we've done is our original hand-stitched cork coasters. So we were talking today about how great these coasters are. I've given you multiple reasons of why you absolutely need to try them for yourself. Um, super fun, super easy, makes great gifts, great for yourself. I'm throwing flowers here. But I wanted to show you guys our original one. Again, I'm throwing things. Hands, they're not working. My favorite collection at the time uh, when this came out was this one. This was back when we did All Access. This was an Anita's Express and it's called Hand Stitched Cork Coasters. They are done exactly the same as these but with a hand stitch style and they have a circle shape to them. So these were really pretty. Drop the flower that I'm throwing everywhere. And I'll show you some of them. The other thing I wanted to point out is we were getting asked about cork earlier and I showed off all those different colors but here you can kind of see how we did three different shades of cork. We have a navy cork, a light, almost like a birch tan color. I don't want to say white because it has like a, a woody color to it. I'm just throwing all the cork coasters today. Uh, and then we have that really nice natural wood color. Um, this one's really pretty because it has flecks of gold in it. So I'll show you some of those close up too. And when I say I'm biased to keeping them, I literally have this coaster stitched out in my office right now that I set my drink on every morning. I love how the blue looks with this really bright pink. Also, we use polyester thread, but this would be a fun project to try matte embroidery threads on too. Another insider tip for you if you haven't tried matte threads. Um, we also haven't cleaned up the edges of these, so you can ignore the fuzzies on them, but you can look at the nice stitching. They're almost like mandalas. I'm gonna set this down so that I can fix my thread. But very pretty. Now, I said that collection's been out for a little bit. I don't have the date for you, but that is one of my favorites because we did it a while ago and we hadn't done any cork really until then. Um, maybe in a few projects, but making something strictly like cork coasters. I was like, oh, this is so cool. And I ended up keeping like three or four of them, making some at home. I've given some to my best friend. So great to give to people. All right. Again, some more shading. Let me make sure I have the right color in there. Number 10, 147, yes. All right. Set that over here so I can show you the next one. So very cool. I think the navy with the pops of hot pink really seals the deal here for contrast. And then we have a more lighter, like subdued look for the light bean stitching on the, la the light colored wood. Very pretty. Set these over here. Got a fun array of pork coasters going on. I've got Christmas, spring, some mandalas. These are great because they're not seasonally based, so whether it's spring, summer, winter, you can even stitch, oh my gosh guys, I just, epiphany, navy blue pork with silver metallic thread and white, and you can make it look all snowy. So cool. Um, I might have to throw in a pork Christmas, like winter collection to tell, tell our art director we need some snowflake coasters, but that would be really cool. Um, another really fun one with pork, definitely worth mentioning, would be our vintage sign trucks. So this one featured pork in the body of the truck. It wasn't required to use pork. It wasn't a necessary material, but obviously we had fun with applique fabrics and I pulled any of the samples that kind of helped feature that. I had Haley pull several, so we got a mix of everything. And in this one, it has a cool little truck bed done with the pork fabric. Now, while I'm talking about it, I might as well tell you why this is so cute. There is vinyl on the little car window, so the glass is shiny. And the best part, oh, they, they didn't, they did. They sewed it right on there because it's a sample. It's not supposed to be sewn on, but this used to travel with us, so it got sewn on. But the uh, top piece is Velcro, but it got straight on stitched on there by one of our seamstresses. There is Velcro under here, though. You can kind of see it. <laughs> But uh, the pieces on the top come off and they're seasonally based. We even have some that are like a bouquet of tulips. We have some hearts for Valentine's Day. There's a Mother's Day one. Um, so all the little seasonal, like I guess motifs or attachments can come off and change. And you pick a truck design that you like out of the set, stitch the truck, and then you change out the elements seasonally. 
So very cool. We did lots of different materials in this, so I kind of wanted to show you that. Again, we're looking at materials that are different than what we normally use. So today we were talking about cork, but we also have some denim in here. This is a really fun tweed. If you've ever seen like those business jackets or like, um, what am I thinking? Like a Chanel jacket, they do that tweed pattern. Um, so this like metallic tweed is really cool. We use extra home decor linen to kind of get that look in there. And then I mentioned the vinyl window. There is white cotton behind it, so that is what you're seeing under it, but the vinyl gives it that shiny glass effect. You can kind of see my Velcro in here, but again, you can see where they stitched this sample right together so we wouldn't lose it. Um, but in theory, there's your hook and loop, and you can just change out your little seasonal piece. Right now it's decorated for Christmas because he's sewn right on there. Um, but like I said, they have seasonal ones for spring and summer too. And we did things like this really cool linen in here, glitter vinyl, and even velour for the Christmas tree. So some fun with fabrics there. I just wanted to show that off and give you an idea of other ways you can use cork in your collections. People love the truck. Right? I love the truck. Now, reminder, we have the seasonal farm trucks, but we also have tractor truck trailers that came out earlier this year. Um, very cute, and they are like construction vehicles. <laughs> so... I love how that looks. Let's see. Step 11, 1221. That would be my Madeira. Let's play nice now, Madeira. I will be honest. I used to be an only Floriani girl because I knew all the numbers. But as we've started using more Madeira, I've learned that they color match to fabric so much better. So I picked this because it's like the exact shade of the orange that we're using. So if you've noticed that we started swapping in different brands of thread within one collection, that would be why. We're trying to give you the best color matches to what we're using at least. And obviously no one will have the exact same fabric, so you can change it to be whatever looks best with your materials. So right now I just changed the thread to be that nice Madeira color that I mentioned. And we're doing the satin stitch on the inner set of flower petals. So if I look at my finished sample here, obviously we're going to have to cover up the back so that you don't see the bobbin stitches. But right now it's doing the satin on the inner set, so therefore we don't want to cover it just yet. So that step hasn't come up. And we're just running the decorative stitching on those flower petals. Yes, we have a question. Uh, for the truck, Deborah asked if there was a stiff a stiffener. Yes, we. Deborah wants to know if we use stiffener in this. The answer is yes and sometimes no. Uh, in the original collection, we did use stiffener. I believe we mentioned it in the tutorial. It has been quite a few years, but I did help write that one, so don't quote me on it if it had it in there or not. I want to say it included a, like, a template or telling you that you could cut it to shape after it gets tacked down. Um, if you've never used stiffener before, you can buy it. It's kind of like a flexible shaped... Um, it feels like white felt to me. Again, I'm going to keep talking while I rethread this because the Madeira is just causing me problems today. And I don't have a thread stand to go grab. But um, that is a great question. You can use stiffener in the project. The time that we did not use it was when I, we did the farm tractor signs or the tractor truck ones. Um, it looks like construction vehicles, basically. Instead of different cotton fabrics and things like soft denim, we ended up using twill. So twill, like a poly twill material that was, uh, has enough body and shape to it that kind of helped the stiffness of it. And they're also done on tearaways, so that tearaway being sandwiched between all the layers kind of helps give it shape too, um, without me like holding it. It does stay upright, and if you were to hang it on a door, it doesn't like flop or fold. So what you want to prevent is the floppiness, but even if you don't have stiffener at home, if you use two layers of tearaway in your hoop, that should give it a little bit more substantial shape to help it from falling over or flopping at all. So that's a great question. Play nice thread. There we go. And of course, it went like a half inch without stitching anything. Let's see, we're gonna back it up just a little bit. Oh no, it was travel stitching, that's fine. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. You know what, I see why it's doing it. I'm gonna fix it. It keeps wrapping itself around the needle. And I can see it wrapped and then threaded through the eye of the needle, and that's just going to cause some issues. So we'll just try threading again until it gets threaded nice and smooth. There we go. Now it's not wrapped around there. All I did was take a look at the needle, and I could see the thread kind of curled around it. And that's what I wanted to try and avoid because I knew it would cause friction. So now we're good to go. That's still running some satin stitches. But yes, our last question was about stiffener for the project. 
not only this project, um, anything that has like a door side shape to it, you definitely can add stiffener. The place I would do it, if you're not sure, would be right before you add the back fabric. So if it doesn't have it in the design, rerun one of your placement tack down steps and you can always add stiffener in. Make it your own, you guys. Obviously, you don't have to do that. If you've never run a design with Anita before, we make it easy enough that you can run it as is, the way we digitized it, and just follow along with the steps. But I love to give extra info for the people who are tuned in, who have been doing this for a little while, and want to find some fun ways to take it to the next level. Um, so that would be my suggestion. You can use stiffener. You can try it without. I actually think this, this one doesn't feel like it has stiffener. It's so cranky. It's this thread. I swear I'm about to just give up on this Madeira. And I have to pull it from the top because it keeps getting stuck. Teresa asked, can you turn the Madeira cone around? You know, let's try it. I've not had anyone suggest that yet. Who suggested that? It was Teresa Rizzo. Thank you, Teresa. I'm going to try what Teresa just suggested, which is flip the cone. <laughs> so we're going to give that a go. It does have that like bottom flared cap on the spool, but We'll see if it happens to move over, over it nicely. Oh, and I got to back it up because it missed some stitches. I said it's an easy project and then today it wanted to be difficult. But I swear it's not this hard. It's just the machine being cranky. All right. Back it up a few steps. There we go. Just a couple clicks in. Try it again pick up where it left off. I can see it happening. If you guys want to see what the thread looks like, I can tell it's just not super happy right there where it was breaking. So this satin might not look the cleanest, but it's definitely just a school. But here we go. I did try her suggestion and it looks like it's working just fine. So we're going to give that a thumbs up. <laughs> Teresa also gave it. Yeah, Teresa, I love you. You were awesome. Because now if I ever run into this problem again while stitching on live, I'm going to think of you, Teresa, and just be like, flip the spool over. I love learning from you all, too. So anytime you can give me a tip that makes my life easier, I'm happy to take it. Uh, Cynthia asked for the truck collection. Ah, Cynthia wants to know the name of them. Vintage Truck Signs is the one that I'm holding up. And then Farm Tractor Truck Signs, I believe, is the other collection. Um, they're both making signs like this. Their pieces are also interchangeable. So if you own one of them, maybe you own this one because it's older and you haven't seen the Farm Tractor Signs. If you buy both collections, you actually can take their little seasonal pieces and mix them between the trucks and the farm trucks. Um, or the tractor trucks, and very cute because they have different seasonal icons, so you're not repeating any of the same ones. So you can end up growing your library, keeping both, and maybe you just want the pickup truck, but you like the motifs in the other collection. Um, they're done the exact same way, freestanding with that Velcro on them, and they can go on to both different designs. So very great question. And I love the truck too, it's just so cute. All right, don't mind me hydrating. Still going with that final little bit of satin stitching there. I hear you, Thread. You're breaking again. Yep. We tried it backwards, and it still broke. I think it's truly just the machine. You guys, I probably should have changed the needle. That's, That's what I what didn't do. Said. Yeah. I probably should have, but I didn't. It doesn't look bent. It has no burrs or nicks on it, so I figured it's fine. But it probably also has been a little bit since we've changed it, so. We will change it after today's live. The last <laughs> so. time would have been Josephine. Oh yeah, so two or three weeks ago. But mind you, we don't stitch every day on this machine because I'm sure people are like gasping when I just said that. We stitched a project Thursday two weeks ago and then last Thursday and now. So it's been used like three times. So it's not been detrimental entirely. All right, I'm still missing some of the satin. Where are you missing? There we go. Oh yeah, I missed a whole section. Right there. Let's try that. The beauty of having an on-screen screen, screen <laughs> where I can see the design and what's happening. I feel like I still missed a section. We'll see. We shall see. Oh no, it's doing it. Okay, it's going into the point. I was worried like it's missing a flower petal, but it's not. All right, so we finished our truck sign discussion. I have some more cork things. I have talked about this collection a few times, but I keep bringing it back because lately it's just hitting all the techniques we've been talking about. So this is our dollhouse quilt. 
so cool. If you haven't seen us present this on live yet, it is from a couple years ago. I don't know if the year is on here. 2020 came out the year of COVID. <laughs> Terrible to think of it that way, but February 2020 is when this one released. Uh, this is such a cool collection. I wish I had another version of the sample to show you. We have a lot of these, which are horizontal, but the house can be built vertical, like a rectangular vertical quilt, um, and you can stack it like a multi-story house. I'm gonna move the machine to the next step and then I'll bring that back up to show you guys. Oh, perfect, we're done with the petals and now we're doing the center shading. Oh my gosh, again, I lost my little thread tail. There we go. I hate pulling from the top unless I have to. All right, so now we're back to the nice forward rolling Floriani spools. And we're gonna go ahead and embroider our center of the flower. So check in for you guys, we're doing the yellow step right there. All right, so with this awesome, awesome quilt. Now, this is obviously really fun if you have kids, grandkids, little ones in the family. It literally makes a dollhouse, y'all. Like every room, you get to be the designer. You can pick which rooms your quilt is gonna have in it. You can do stairwell blocks. There's like sashing blocks that make like stairwells to go to the second story. Um, also cool, we talked about 3D last week is there's 3D pockets on this one. So you actually can stick little people in the bathtub or in the bed. Um, and it does come with raw edge felt characters that you can stitch out that are front and back sided. Um, to little people that you can stick into the scene and kind of play pretend with them. We even have a pocket on the bed. We have a nice kitchen. And I'm gonna flip this around and show you some of the materials. I grabbed this one obviously because it has some cork in it. But it has so many other fun fabrics too. So obviously our grass and our background scene were made with cotton. But here is that cork used in a home decor setting. So where we actually used it in like a house to make like wood flooring. We also did it in the cabinets here. Really cool that you can see we have vinyl over the embroidery so that it looks like the glass panels on a cabinet. Love that. We did a silk dupioni in the fridge to give it that awesome stainless steel fridge look. Who doesn't love a pop of sparkle? So glitter vinyl for those tiles there. And no, we didn't have to trim each little square. It's just stitched right over with that grid pattern to make the brick. So very fun. Again, we have more vinyl on the shower here. So cool. Little digitized picture frame pictures. And then of course, more cork on the head. So very cool. I really wanted to show off some of the different applique fabrics that can be used. It's fun to kind of stretch your creative thinking and be like, well, what material could I use here instead of just a fat quarter cotton, a bundle fabric from cottons? Um, I like to think outside of the box or outside of the hoop. Fun things we can use. All right, so I'm gonna change my thread from this melon color to the little accent flower that's gonna go directly in the center of this. It has to be this machine because it keeps losing my thread from the bottom and making me pull it from the top, which we all know is a no-no, but it's not giving me any choices. Susie Soto says, you have my dream job. <laughs> oh, Susie, I have to admit, it is quite an awesome career. <laughs> and people are asking if there's gonna be a code this live. There is gonna be a code. Haley, why don't we go ahead and give them that code? They've been so patient. Thank you guys for reminding me. It's hard to keep track sometimes. Um, but we are doing 10% off your order with the code TAKE10, T-A-K-E 10. Um, that'll give you 10% off your order total for tuning in with us today. That code is valid until midnight tonight, so you can use it, and that's Eastern time. I have to always say Eastern time because people need to know where we are in the U.S., um, but you have till midnight for that. Um, and since you guys tuned in for the live, I love to give you some other information as well. I'm gonna put this quilt away. Um, the other cool thing is that we are actually starting our sale tomorrow on spring. So I mentioned earlier in the live that spring kickoff was this year, or this week, not this year. Um, but we had the official day of spring on, was it Tuesday? Tuesday was the first day of spring. And because of that, we wanted to put some spring collections on sale. So we're doing 30% off the spring category starting tomorrow, but you guys get to know about it first. So you can be the first to look at what there is, kind of get a wish list going tonight. And then tomorrow morning, you can hop on and get them for a deal. Um, I wanted to check in and show off the stitch out here to see where we're at. So this is all the embroidery ran. I mentioned to you guys, we have to do a back fabric. If we look on screen on my machine, I have three steps remaining. So it's going to be the back tack is the next step that we're about to run. And then of course I mentioned there's two sets of satin stitches for the tips and we're gonna make the bobbin match both of them, but the top color can be changed so that they actually continue the flower tips. 
So what I'm going to do is flip the design over to the back side. This is where our bobbin stitching can be seen from. If you've never done a freestanding project in the hoop before, this is the time to shine, you guys. You get to see how we do this on the back of the hoop. So we're going to take that. I'm going to prop it up right here so you guys can even see it. And then I'm going to find a piece of my cork fabric. I think I'm going to go with, do I have enough red? Oh, I might be cutting it close. I might have to do orange. I don't think I have another piece of the red. Let's see if I can finagle it. Oh, I think I can, just like that. And before I even do anything else, you know what I realized, Catherine? I don't have tape. Is there a roll of tape over there? That's the one thing I was forgetting. <laughs> and if not, I might ask you to grab some, because I do need tape for the back of the hoop. Yeah, that's it. yeah, we're going to have Catherine run out and grab some tape for us. But what I did right there is I just held it, making sure my placement stitch, or there is no placement, but the back of my design, all of the bobbin stitches fully covered. So the end of my petal was here. I made sure it covers that. And then I'm just going to tape that onto the back of the embroidery hoop. So we're waiting on the tape, but that gives you an idea of where it's going to go. Shape and size doesn't really matter. It doesn't have to be the prettiest cut. Obviously, I just took whatever scrap I had. And instead of using a whole new sheet of cork by using this, I'm ending up saving some material. Awesome. Thank you. And then there is that pink embroidery tape I was talking to you guys about earlier. My biggest recommendation when using stuff, let's see, on the back of a hoop, I have to like pause when I'm thinking mid-thought to like place this, make sure I cover everything, um, is that you slide your hoop in and out, up and down in this case. Um, some machines I know clip in, so there are different home machine models. But because I'm doing the sliding, I know my stitch stops right there, I'm actually going to tape at the top and bottom first because that's where I slide the design in and out of the machine. So I want to make sure that the fabric is nice and secure in that area so that it won't lift away. Again, how you tape doesn't need to look pretty. It just needs to be functional. Like it just needs to do its job. Um, and obviously this curls up a little bit and I don't want it to catch or fold under when I go to run the design. So I'm just gonna go ahead, I'll actually use half the tape. Tape the edge down there and on my other side. So it's a Frankenstein tape job. You guys can see how silly that looks, but it doesn't matter because I used as much of the red cork as I could. I've taped it nice and secure. And we did this tip last week, I think with Catherine. Or was it, it was with you? Okay, I wanted to make sure I was right. Where if you hold it up to the light, you can see your back fabric in the hoop and make sure that you are fully covering the place where it's gonna embroider. So I can see that my material covers the whole shape of the flower. When I go to put my hoop in, I love to guide it with my hand under the foot to make sure the fabric doesn't bunch up under there. And then again, you could just kind of take a peek at it as you slide the hoop back into the machine. And everything's nice and stuck down, so it looks good to go. And I'm going to go ahead and run the tacking step, but I'm going to use the color that I know I want to finish the design in, so I don't have to change it anymore, which is going to be, I believe, the 147. Red color. We are in the home stretch of finishing our flower, and it's going to be so pretty. All right, and I have the exciting news to share with you guys. I'll do when it's getting to the satin stitch. So once I trim the back fabric, then I'll tell you about my next week's surprise. That's a big deal for us. We're very excited. But we're going to go ahead and do the tack down step. Now, I haven't put the bobbin in the machine yet, but I do have it right here. So I went ahead and pre-wound on just an empty bobbin spool the color that I want to match. And right before we finish the design, we're going to swap that in to help match the color. So that was our two ply pass for our tack down. And now on screen, you can kind of see the first set of satins and then those little tips will finish it off. So what we're gonna do is pull the design out of the machine, flip it over, and now you can see, that's why I left the bobbin in there as white, so you guys would easily be able to see the outline. But there is the shape of the back of the flower. So what I'm gonna do now is take the tape off. The great thing about this r &K pink tape, I always preach it, you can re-stick it, reuse it for multiple projects. It also won't leave any residue all over your machine, even the touch screen. You can put it there and it won't leave like sticker residue. 
So highly recommend this pink embroidery tape. It's great. It even can hold rolled sweatshirts back for you guys, which is awesome. Um, so real quick, I'm going to take my scissors. I'm going to lay this flat to trim, and we're going to trim away the excess fabric or cork fabric, I should say, from the back side. If you tuned in with me earlier, I mentioned that if you're doing a single color cork fabric flower, that's a lot to say, but things like this purple one or the red one where there is no secondary applique in it, you don't have to trim the top and bottom until the very end, right before the satin stitch. Um, that's a pro tip we love to do here because as embroidery gets stitched onto fabric, things kind of contract. Um, sometimes stitches pull out, like the fabric will pull out of the edge. Um, we try to control, quality control for that in all of our designs. Um, but when you're working on embroidery, even any embroidery project, we love to say wait till trimming, um, till you absolutely have to. Because then you allow the fabric a little bit of room. You can see how things stitch out. And then just trim both sides of the hoop at the same time. But in this case, my flower had a center applique. And so I had to trim the first applique to lay the second. So just some knowledge for you on that. Reminder that we are doing a live promo code of live t or take 10. I want to make sure I said it right. It's take 10 for 10% 10 off your order. We're saving you a couple bucks there. That's really exciting. And we have tons of spring collections to choose from starting tomorrow for our sale. It will be 30% off spring. And just in time for spring are these really cute coasters. So there is the trimmed back. And of course our front was trimmed. I'm gonna go ahead and swap out my bobbin now. So this is the important step to remember. If you want them to have a clean finish, this is what we do. If you could care less, you can leave white in there and it'll just have a white bobbin stitch on the back. But I want them to look professionally finished. And so I'm gonna take the bobbin that I wound earlier. I did a match to my thread that I'm about to run on the edge. And I'm gonna go ahead and lay that into the machine and then stick my hoop back in and give it a go. And if you ever forget to match your bobbin, another tip we love to say is grab the closest matching marker you can, and you can always color the white bobbin in. Um, we've done that one too many times here because people forget sometimes to add that white bobbin in. So definitely an extra tip to tell you guys. Um, that's always helpful. Real quick, I'm just gonna show you a couple more before I go into this big exciting announcement. We talked about different applique materials, so I had to grab these crazy cubes. This is an Anita's Playhouse collection, Crazy Cubes is the name of it, where they literally are Velcro cubes. How cool is that? So they are made with foam inserts and then you just put the cover around it and then stitch the gap shut. They get big squares of Velcro added. We do teach you how to make the whole project, but the idea is that kids can take them and switch up their heads and their outfits. I love the crinkling Velcro sound. It's just so satisfying. But um, we have a lot of really cool fabrics in this one, so I just wanted to show you a peek of some of those. We have some really cute pleather boots with that faux leather vinyl. Again, it's not real leather, so you can just buy craft sheets of it. There's an example of that poly twill that has a nice um, stiffer shape to it usually when we use it. We have some felt in there for the kitty red glitter vinyl. There's some textured glitter vinyl. Like this is the stuff with, it won't come off, but it's that really chunky glitter. She's so cute. We got our little slippers have minky on them. And she's kind of minky. We got, this guy's why I grabbed him, his little cork boots. So cute. So just an extra little peek of some cork, as well as we showed all these posters. Bookmarks. Bookmarks have to be one of the most popular projects because they're so easy to do. These were our Bible bookmarks. Super pretty. We did just the same color cork for all of them, but reminder that we have like lighter options and colors available out there. So whatever you can get creative with is what you can use. We also did metallic threads in these, so we did some fun sparkle. So just a little peek of those. These are bedside holders. So these are the last cork ones I just want to show you guys. This is a really cool concept. If you're at home, you stick this piece under the mattress of your bed or bedding, whatever. If you have a mattress topper, it can go there. But you lay it under the mattress, in theory. And then this hangs off the edge of the bed and you can put anything from like readers, nighttime medication, chapstick, 
magazines if you're a book reader at night and because this flap is like about 12 inches or so and hangs in the bed the weight of the bed and yourself or whoever's sitting there keeps the flap from falling off the bed and stays inside of the mattress so now you have like a cute little holder and so there's like the concept of that one it does have like an expandable flap this does feature stiffener in it so we talked about stiffener earlier this is one of those projects where it will walk you through how to do the stiffener what to cut it as um, and there are multiple designs included in that so again there's a really pretty one this is just such a cute concept you could also put it on a couch if you got couch cushions that are removable or can come up to be clean you could set this under the edge of like a couch cushion and just have the remotes and stuff there or tv guide so very cool i think people forget we ever released this but bedside holder is the name of it very cool project to do with court now if you've stayed tuned and you're still listening i have the coolest most exciting announcement ever um, we've been asked, and I know Martha's been asking me, what's the next big project Anita has been working on? Um, you guys have been quiet lately, and it's because we've been hard at work making the next big project. Um, I have it here to show off to you guys, but I will let you know that pre-order for this project starts Monday next week. This is our gnome embroidery machine cover. So this is so cute, you guys. I know gnomes are like the rage. They're also just precious. Even if you weren't a gnome lover before, Anita, once you've seen all of our gnome designs, I feel like we'll sucker you in because they're just too cute. But this is a fully functioning, I'm gonna hold it up over me, full machine cover that goes over your embroidery machine. <laughs> so we've only done one other cover in the past and it was for sewing machines because of the size. But we did some measurements and we figured out a way to do it for the home embroidery machine. Now the cover is great for when you're storing the machine. Obviously you don't need the embroidery arm on when you're going to slip the cover over. So this is kind of based on the dimensions of the whole machine's body, including ones with the really big touch screen. So this was our A block size sample that you see here. It does come in multiple block sizes. The best part is, let's say you don't want the cover. You can literally turn all the blocks into a quilt too, so it's multi-purpose. And all of the elements that you see embroidered on here will be included in the collection as isolations. So it's jam-packed with a lot of fun. Now the really cool part I wanted you guys to know about is the gnome embroidery machine cover is going to be pre-ordered next week, Monday through the following Sunday. Now the cool thing is that it's going to be an online course option. So we're actually going to release it two different ways. I'm going to change my thread color real quick while I'm telling you guys, but I just have the last thread color to switch to. Um, but for this gnome embroidery machine cover, we're going to run the pre-order for about a week or so, extend it through Sunday, and we are going to include the option to purchase it as an online course where we will have step-by-step -step instructional video with our seamstress on how to do the whole project, including the lining and the binding. And if you don't want that version, we'll have a cheaper version where it's just the PDF with all the design files. You still get step-by-step -step instructions, um, but there won't be the video part of the course. And so that was just something really cool. I wanted to tell you guys that you don't have to buy the video course if you don't want to, but if you don't, you're missing out because I'm telling you, the video course is really cool. We have Amy talking through the whole project, one of our seamstresses here at Anita, and she explains how the cover is done, how to um, create the dimensions and do the lining which we get asked about a lot for things like quilts. How do you back and bind? And yeah, yes, and Catherine. I'm terrible, I forgot. Catherine did the block step-by-steps too. So we have a lot of cool footage to share for that. The cover will be on pre-order next week. Now, if you are an All Access, or not All Access, if you are an Anita's discount card member, I've been here for too long, y'all, forgive me, <laughs> um, then you will get 50% uh, off the pre-order pricing, which is super exciting because you're saving half. Now, we just confirmed prices today. The full course with video instruction will be $69.95, and the regular version without the video, so just the PDF and the designs, that's going to be $34.95, so the price point of our projects. Um, but you really, if you can do the $69.95, you're getting instructional video with how to do the step-by-steps of one block with the embroidery and the folded fabric frame. Um, you're then seeing how to piece the top of the project and then how to do the sewing for the whole thing. So very cool. I want to flip it over so you guys can kind of see some of the other designs on here. It's so cute. You can expect us to pop on the live next week or even just a pre-record. We might do another promotional um, info for this so you guys can hear more about it. Um, but this is not the last you'll be seeing of it because it's coming out soon. Um, so definitely keep an eye peeled on Monday morning next week for our pre-order to launch. Again, discount card members will get 50% off the pre-order price. If you're not a discount card member, you might want to sign up before next Monday. Um, so lots of great benefits for you there. And we have been so excited to release this one. So stay tuned on that. 
Of course, it had to <laughs> break the thread when I'm on the last machine step. We are almost in the final bit, you guys. I just want to make sure the satin finishes because, like I said, I want to keep this. I don't want it to have a little gap anywhere. It's so close to being done. I'm just going to back it up. Let's see. I think right around there. Pamela says she wished gnomes could be a part of her family. <laughs> oh, I do too. They're just, I want them in my garden. I just want them to hang out there. Be little gnomes. Isn't that the thing that garden gnomes are known for? They like protect your garden and ward off the pests and stuff. So, so cute. I wanted to pan over this with the phone camera so you guys can see some of the embroidery on this. Not only are we so excited just because this has been a work in progress for the whole team, but all the techniques included in this are cute. Obviously, it's a cover, but I mentioned earlier you can turn this into an actual quilt. So we have a stippled block pattern in here where we just feature fun fabric. We have multiple little gnome motifs. I love how he's like zenning out on the bobbin thread there. Just so cute. Stitch the day away with some double ghost applique scissors in there. So we have like two satin stitches on the scissors to really emphasize them. So many cute things. And we did include um, the name and brand of the fabric line we used. Since this is releasing soon, you guys might still be able to snag the fabric collection that we feature here. Um, but obviously it can be done with any fat quarter set. We just picked a fat quarter online, ordered it. And we just colored all of the designs and motifs based on all the colors that were in our fabric line. So super cute. I love how pretty the stipple blocks even are. Like just letting the fabric speak is nice, but the nice quilt stitches. You can use these with anything. And obviously if you're a sucker for gnomes and gardening, this is just the cutest spring collection. So since we were talking about spring, I wanted you guys to kind of see what we have been working on for a while now. And we have some crazy quilt blocks in here, crazy stitch. It's hard to show because this is the side of the cover. There we go, now you can kind of see it. But our cover is about two block rows high, four wide, and then again, two on the end. But like I mentioned, it is customizable based on the size of your machine. We even give you a little formula to help you finish that out. Shout out to Catherine for that. <laughs> and very cute with standard applique and lots of different stuff. So that is the Gnome Embroidery Machine Cover. Be on the lookout for that going live starting Monday for the pre-order. And then we'll probably go full on live with actual course and drop about a week after. So we'll see. But I hope you guys are excited for that one. And our flower is finished. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that out. Show it off here. Look at how cute. Very nice. So it did finish. I definitely like it better with the one seamless color on the back. And as we demonstrated last week, our favorite thing about tearaway is you could just poke right through it and pop it out. Love to get violent with the tearaway because at that point, you know your project's done. Um, and I'm going to go ahead, pull that out. And I want to show you up close so you can kind of see what I mean here. But depending your stabilizer, and obviously where the tie-offs of your machine cut off, you will have some little fuzzies on the edge. To clean that up like we do, you can use a small, very controlled flame, <laughs> like a tea light candle. Um, or if you're worried about fire, you don't have to use that. You can use a hot knife, or my favorite method would just be taking those curved tip scissors, wherever I set them, somewhere, oh, they fell on the floor. You can take your scissors and just kind of trim those little fuzzies away off the edge. So you can do that, clean it up, and then I mentioned also the marker tip. If you ever find that you can't match your bobbin, which I did, all you're seeing here is the tearaway pulp, which can be cleaned up. Um, we do love the fire technique here. We use it a lot for a studio as well. So you just take like a little lighter. Candle lighter works great because it gives you some distance from the flame. Um, but you just very gently, a couple inches away, hold it near it, and it will help um, get rid of the, those fuzzies for you. So that's Singe an extra tip. Singe, yes, thank you. It's been a long day. <laughs> the word was escaping me. Um, but there is our finished cork coaster. So floral co coast cork coasters. I'm telling you, it's a tongue twister today. That was our project of the day. Really cool to do with this cork fabric. And we went over some other awesome projects that have that cork fabric in them. Everything like the hand-stitched cork, Christmas confetti coasters. We had those bedside holders, the crazy cubes with fun appliques in them. So basically this is a long-winded way of saying try different fabrics. You don't always have to use cotton and the end results can look really magical and almost store-bought. So I hope you guys enjoyed the stitch out today. Be sure to re-watch it if you tuned in a little bit late. You can watch the whole thing on our YouTube channel. Be sure to throw us a like or a subscribe and a comment. Let us know you're liking the live so that we get the engagement because otherwise they could disappear. 
So definitely tell us if you're liking what we're doing or if you have any suggestions for what you want us to stitch on the live. Um, again, we have that sale that will be starting tomorrow for 30% off spring, so keep an eye out for that to happen. And for today, for tuning into the live, you guys get 10% off your order total with the code TAKE10. So thank you so much for joining the Floral Cork Coaster Stitch Out today. I'm Melissa, and I hope you have a great weekend. and have